Hello everybody. Warm greetings for all my distant learners. I am Dr. Sonal Chabda and today the topic of our discussion would be Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. We all know that education is a priority. Education is something which is not desirable but it's something which is required in all ways for all individuals for the betterment of the nation. Regarding the same, Sarv Shiksha Abhyan was launched. It was pioneered by former Prime Minister Shri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. SSA, as we shortly call it, Sarv Shiksha Abhyan is a part of universalization of elementary education which was launched by the government of India in the year 2002. It was after almost 10 years when we had declared education as a fundamental right. The program aimed to provide useful and relevant elementary education for all the children in the age group of 6 to 14 years by the year 2010. The overall goals of SSA include universal access and retention, number two, bridging of gender and social category gaps in education and enhancement of the learning needs of the children. Before understanding or getting into the detail of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan, let us first understand what is the background of this Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. It was in the year 1993 when the Supreme Court of India gave a judgment in which it declared education as a fundamental right for all the children of the age group of 6 to 14 years. This was in the year 1993. Five years later, a conference was held of all the education ministers, that is in 1998. A national committee was then set up of all the education ministers under the chairmanship of HRD minister which was supposed to work on this report and they eventually submitted their report in the year 1999, so one year after the committee was formed. The broad framework of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan is based on the recommendations of this particular national committee. The committee recommended active participation and partnership between the central government, the state government and the local government in the quest for the universal elementary education. The aim is universal elementary education and since education is a concurrent subject, so it is falling under the purview of the central government also and the state government also. So eventually it was decided that SSA should be working comprehensively bringing all these frameworks together and should be particularly focusing on universalization of elementary education. Let me now get down to the major characteristics of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. This is a program which was a formed or which was enhanced or which was implemented with a clear time framework for the universal elementary education. This was an opportunity for promoting social justice through the basic education. There had been so many disparities in the Indian society. So it was aimed or it was thought of that SSA would help in promoting social justice. This was a response to the demand for quality basic education all over the country. We cannot suffice only with providing education. We need to focus on quality basic education. Next characteristic feature was an effort was made at effectively working out or effectively involving the different levels of governance, the Panchayati Raj institutions, the school management committees, the village and the urban slum level education committees, the parent teachers associations, the mother teacher associations, the tribal autonomous councils and other grassroots structures in the management of elementary schools. So this was one way to involve everybody into the education system and not only the particularly the upper people who are managing or who are administering the setup. An expression of political will for the universal elementary education across the country was felt when SSA was launched because now there were no political foundations, now there were no legal foundations for not having education or not providing education to any particular age group. A partnership between the central, state and the local government as highlighted earlier also, it needed a partnership. Education needs to have a partnership between the central, the state and particularly the local government which is in direct touch with the people. This was an opportunity for the states to develop their own vision of elementary education. There was convergence of efforts, there was convergence of efforts of states, central and local governments, but it provided an opportunity for all the states to have their own vision of elementary education because in India it's a geographically very uh, widely spaced country. So every state has its own concerns, has its own nature, has its own structure, has its own vision and has its own problems. Next characteristic feature was a result oriented approach with accountability towards performance and output at all levels. So there is 
accountability also. It's not only in terms of the input, we need to see somewhere that the kind of inputs which were being made by the government are having an output and performance at all levels. The feature which needs to be discussed now is an equity based approach that focused on the needs of educationally backward areas and disadvantaged social groups including children with special needs. See, people who are from the normal setups, it's easier for them to get education. But the people or the children who are not from the so-called advantaged section of the society or who belong to the disadvantaged social groups which may be girls, which may be from the weaker economic sections, which may be from the weaker social sections and also a group which is called including children with special needs. So they all needed education and they all needed some kind of special efforts also. The next feature is the institutional reforms and capacity building to ensure a sustained effort for universalization of elementary education. So we needed some kind of institutional reforms also. Things cannot be done only on paper. We need to have or the SSA envisioned to have some kind of institutional reforms also. Coming to the objectives of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan, all the children in the school which means through any ways, education guarantee center, alternate school, back to school, they all need to be in the school by 2003. This was envisioned or this was the objective of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan when it was launched. All children should have completed five years of primary schooling by 2007. The third objective was all children complete eight years of elementary schooling by 2010. Now the next objective was there was a focus on elementary education of satisfactory quality with emphasis on education for life. So it was not only access, it was not only getting the children into the school, the next desired step was that they should have some kind of or they should have all kinds of quality education and the education which is giving them something for life and it's not only paper and pencil work which is going on in the schools. The next objective was bridging all the gender and the social category gaps at the primary age by the 2007 and elementary education level by 2010. So all kinds of disparities in the number of girls who are going in the schools and the number of boys who are going in the school or any other disparities which have been observed at the primary stage including the number of children who are from the weaker section who are going to school or again children with special needs who are going to school. So these gaps were planned that they should be absorbed or they should be dissolved by the year of 2007. Then the next aim was universal retention by 2010. So not only we need to have get the children into the school, we need to keep them in the school. And that was the last objective of SSA that is universal retention by 2010 so that the students do not drop out from the school. Coming down to the basic features of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan, the first characteristic feature was institutional reforms. So efforts needed to be made at all levels. They were needed to be made so that we could provide education to all the children. Again, reaffirming the point that since it's a participation of the central, the state and the local government, so institutional reforms were uh, aimed at or were needed at all these levels. The second basic feature is sustainable financing. This is working out a program which has been planned. Things work better on paper when it, when it comes to getting it down on the ground, it needs more efforts. Sustainable financing is one such feature. So initially it was planned that the center government is going to put more money and the uh, share of the states is going to be less but eventually it was planned that with the coming five year plans as the country is going to progress as the states are going to get a bit better so then eventually the states are going to have a better share as compared to the central government the third is the community ownership it cannot be that people from only the upper side manage the things the top down approach won't go here so we needed the community ownership so that the community participates. That was the reason behind having Panchayati Raj institutions into the system, the school management committees into the system, so that there is community ownership of the setup. The next basic feature was institutional capacity building. Besides institutional reforms as the basic feature, as number one basic feature, the next was institutional capacity building. So there needs to be the capacity of the personnel who are working in these sectors needs to be enhanced. The next is improving mainstream educational administration. So 
educational administration see the whole focus of ssa was somewhere on administration capacity building reforms all these are somewhere going to highlight that if these things are better managed the things are going to be better on in terms of the ground level the next basic feature was community based monitoring with full transparency so it's not only that the communities are going to get the ownership or communities are going to get the participation of the same they are going to have the rights of monitoring also with full kind of transparency systems so anybody can get up who is involved in the same and understand how and where the money has been spent for the same it was planned that every school is going to have a notice board on which all the details regarding the ssa would be put up the next basic feature was accountability in the community so community doesn't has only the right to assess to monitor but it is accountable also since it needed or since it required a large amount of money which is going to be there so some kind of accountability is necessary on the part of the community also the next basic feature is priority to the education of the girls since we had a gender disparity we had already realized that there were lesser number of girls who were in the setup so we needed more girls or we needed more efforts to bring girls to the schools next basic feature is the focus on special groups so the children with special needs the children from the economically backward section the children belonging to the socially disadvantaged group there needs to be a focus on all these groups so that they are brought to the education system through any ways next basic feature was the pre project phase ssa was not launched from day one there was a pre project phase which followed which preceded the launch of the ssa it was done in some specific districts which were selected on certain basis and then eventually the project was launched what was the benefit of this pre project phase was that it helped us understand or it had helped the government understand what are the fallacies what are the drawbacks and where were the areas which can be improved on so it helped in a better ssa in that terms the next feature is there was a thrust on quality coming back again the focus is not only on access not only on enrollment the third important point is retention and retention can be sustained only in terms of quality if the students feel that they are understanding something that they are getting something from the school only then they are going to be in the school so there was a thrust on the quality the next basic feature is the role of teachers teachers everybody says that they are pivot point of the education system but to understand and actually use this pivot point was a characteristic feature of sarv shiksha abhiyan so they focused on teachers the next basic feature is district elementary education plans now since we understand that india is a geographically spaced country so we needed we know that there is difference in the culture there is difference in the problems there are difference in the setups of all kinds or all districts in india so district elementary education plans helped us to plan at a district level a district in haryana is very different from a district in northeast there are different features there are different geographical uh, boundations and so we all needed to understand that planning in haryana planning for a district in haryana and planning for a district in sikkim is going to be very different and that was one basic feature which helped ssa to grow a lot now after understanding the basic features of ssa we need to move further we need to understand how did the government or how was the planning made to implement these basic ideas so the important interventions is the next area the first was the availability of the teachers the teachers if they are short in number if they are handling more students in a class they obviously are not able to serve the purpose so one basic feature was making the teachers available in the school so appointment of a large number of teachers of ssa under the purview of ssa was made in different government schools next was the maintenance grants for the school the schools cannot work the way they are working they need more money they need more grants for different maintenance issues so under ssa special grants or different kinds of grants were made for different kinds of schools depending on their needs again the third is the civil infrastructure developments ssa always realized that infrastructure developments are very necessary for the sustenance of the education in the country and a lot of money a lot of planning was being done in this area and so ssa made 
or granted lot of money for civil infrastructure developments depending again on the schools whether they are in the rural areas or whether they are in the urban areas because again the needs are very different the rural areas needs are very different and the urban areas needs are very different the next major intervention of ssa was teacher training we have already said that we need a number of teachers so we need not just number of teachers we need good teachers also now understanding the teacher education in the country is in a very different shape there were not many teachers who were trained so ssa talked about training at in service level also so they have special slots and they have made special arrangements for these kind of things and there's a lot of in service training which is going on for the teachers who are working in the area the next important intervention was education of girls a lot of schemes were planned they basically two important schemes were planned so that girls get into the system we all say that if a girl is educated the family is educated we understand the importance of the education of the girls but again india being a different country there were not many large number of people who were sending their girls to the school so different schemes different uh, ideas were launched so that the girls are brought into the ambit of the education the next important intervention was education for children with special needs there is a large number of population with children with special needs who are who are not into the system since we aimed since we desired that education should be given to everybody any child who is in the age group of 6 to 14 years so there were efforts needed so that children with special needs are also made into the system the next uh, intervention was alternative and innovative education scheme we cannot think that we can provide education only through schools there may be conditions when the child is not able to come to school so we need to do some kind of innovation some kind of alternative arrangement and we are taking education to their homes so this was specifically done for children with special needs whose degree of impairment was such that they could not come regularly to the school so arrangements were made or provisions were made so that probably twice a week or thrice a week some kind of therapist is going to the houses of these people and they are training the child or they are educating the child in their setup only moving further the next important intervention by ssa planned for ssa was supervision and monitoring when you do not monitor when you do not supervise you do not realize where you are going ahead since we had or since ssa had clear time frames involved we had the years in the mind so continuous supervision and continuous monitoring was an important intervention which was thought of by the ssa so that we could improve on our mistakes or we could improve on our fallacies and make better decisions the next important intervention was the research activities which are needed we get better when we are researching on whatever we are doing and these activities helped ssa to become even more better now the next basic feature or the next important intervention made by ssa was the role of non government organizations we need a lot of money to take schools to every aspect or every sphere of the schools or every sphere of the country so what the government planned was that the non government organizations should also be brought into the ambit because even these ngos are working closely with the community and that helps to get more connected with the community so non government organizations were also planned or were also brought into the ambit of ssa the next important intervention was the role of the block resource centers known as the brcs and the cluster resource centers known as the crcs now again these helped people to bring together their problems bring together their ideas and there were weekly meetings there were periodic meetings so the people from the different sections come together people from the different schools come together they are able to understand each other's problem they are able to learn from each other and the system gets better you don't need to repeat every mistake you can learn from others mistakes also or from other experiences also so brcs crcs served that purpose wherein we were able to learn from other people's experiences also now so much has been talked about ssa so much basic features characteristic features interventions made let us now see where has it headed to what is the progress so far though the target was 2010 and now it is 2016 still we haven't been able to reach all the targets but we have made a lot of progress the ssa has been successful in providing lot to the country lot may be needed to be done but lot has been already done 
the basic progress in the area of universal access the number of schools there were 173757 habitations which were unserved by primary schools in the year 2001 2002 mind it when this was the year when ssa was launched over the years 204686 primary schools have been sanctioned a large number of these have been opened so in terms of accessibility yes we have worked a lot we have progressed very far the second area which uh, where a lot of progress has been done is special training for the mainstreaming of out of the school children now these out of the school children could be children who have dropped out children who never entered the school children who are children with special needs children who are living in geographically distant areas the girl child so all these children come to the ambit of the out of the school children so all kinds of efforts or different kinds of efforts were made so that these children are brought to the school and then some kind of special training is given so that they get set into the system also the idea is not only just to get them into the system the idea was to sustain them in the education system so the framework says that the duration of special training is flexible it is definitely going to depend on the needs of the children who are coming into and it may vary from 3 months to 2 years depending again on the child's needs the special training may be in the form of residential courses or may be in the form of non residential courses again depending on need depending on locality depending on facilities available the third progress or the third area of progress is the residential facilities which are being provided in the school ssa has provided 797 residential institutions with a capacity of 88400 children this is since its inception there have been increase a steady increase in the number of children who are being provided residential facilities in the school there are number of different kinds of schools which are being set up under the scheme wherein residential facilities are made available for the children and already existing schools the number of hostels are being added so that children can be made to stay there the next important highlight is all the states and the union territories have been supported have been provided support for moving to an 8 year elementary education cycle by the year 2013 14 why this needs to be highlighted is because again since we were from a different setup since it's a comprising of different states with different ideologies so there were states which were having 5 year elementary education plan and there were states which were having 8 year elementary education plan but ev- eventually everybody was moved to eight year elementary education plan the next is bridging the gender and the social category gaps we all understand this needs to be reformed this needs to be worked out the first area where they have done a lot of work is the girls education a lots of textbooks are being provided special training has been given escorts are being provided so that girls enter into the school a special scheme was launched kasturba gandhi balika vidyalaya and this scheme till the year 30th september till the date of 30th september 2014 15 3609kg bvs have been sanctioned in the country enrolling almost 35 lakh of girls in the schools so that's a highlight or that's a feature which needs to be understood that's a progress which needs to be highlighted because it's encompassing or it's bringing in girls to the system the third area is which needs to be understand or which needs to be seen is removing of gender bias from the curriculum now this was one area which discreetly works or which uh, covertly works and it doesn't lets the girls enter the system or it doesn't lets the girls stay in the system so number of efforts were made curriculum were changed adaptations were made in the curriculum and the girls were made comfortable so that this they do not feel this kind of gender bias in the curriculum the next effort was or the next progress needs to be highlighted is the school management committees it was planned that had to understand the problem of the girls to bring more girls to the school school management committees should have 50% of female members because it's assumed that females are able to understand the problem of the girls better as compared to the male members so since it's going to give a participation of 50% we expect that the girls are going to be better understood and better provisions are going to be made for them then the next progress in the was in the area of teacher training for gender sensitization we all are so much habituated to the fact that boys do like this or girls do like this and uh, the teachers had been having this experience that there were number of boys 
in the class used to be more as compared to the number of the girls in the class. So, lot of gender sensitization was done with the teachers so that their behavior does not exhibit any such kind of bias. Getting down to the next important area was inclusive education which was a highlight or which was a characteristic aim which was aimed by SSA. Uh, when it comes to Sarv Shiksha Abhyan, 27.79 lakh children with special needs have been identified since its inception. In all, almost 97.19% of the identified children with special needs have been covered through various strategies. The various strategies could be getting, their, getting down to their homes, bringing them to the school, both ways. The next is provision of aids and appliances. There are a number of children who need different kinds of aids and appliances. Uh, when it comes to children with special needs and being a poverty ridden nation, being a country with lesser number of resources, so there may be people who may not be able to afford such kind of aids and appliances for their children with special needs. So the government made efforts and almost 80.59% of children with special needs requiring assistive devices have been provided with such appliances by the government. The third progress needs to be understood or the third area of the progress needs to be understood is improving the quality. The number one area is there were curriculum reforms made in all the state government syllabuses according to the national curriculum framework 2005. Now NCF 2005 envisioned children education or envisioned education to be more child friendly, more activity based. So we expect that if the curriculum is being planned on these areas, definitely it is going to lead an improvement in the quality. The next is there were many states where activity based learning has been launched in the schools which are being managed by the government or which are being funded by SSA or under the ambit of SSA. The third is CCEE, Continuous and Comprehensive Evaluation. This is supposed to reduce the uh, number of children who are dropping out. This is supposed to increase the retention because there is no detention policy. So, 34 states have developed their own module for the implementation of CCE as well as there are modules which have been developed by NCERTs which helps them the teachers understand that how the CCEs has to be implemented in the schools. The next progress or the next area of the progress would be teacher training. Availability of the teacher is one area where a lot of improvement has already been done. 19.85 lakh additional teacher posts have been sanctioned under SSA up to the year of 2014-15. Now, out of this, 15.06 lakh posts have already been filled also. So, obviously, we can see from the stats only that there are a number of teachers who have been appointed and who have been brought into the system. The second point, in-service training. SSA provides for annual in-service training of 20 days for all the teachers. So, refreshing them, getting them know what is happening in the present setups and making them better in terms of class handling and other aspects. The academic support system, the academic support structures have been developed 6,716 BRCs and 75,954 CRCs have been set up till September 2014 and these help to bring the people together to understand the system better and to learn from each other's experiences. The next is the computer aided learning. Technology is the key point in understanding or in making the education reach out to people. Now, one cannot imagine the education system without technology. Since the inception of NCSA, approximately 87,753 schools have been benefited under this scheme of computer aided learning or under this feature of computer aided learning. Now, we need to see that the recent government has made certain major initiatives which are contributing or which are expected to contribute to further the success of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. The number one H is the famous Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao scheme. Rupees 5 crore has been made available for strengthening the girls education in 100 specified districts on the basis of child sex ratio. Now this child sex ratio was identified where we find that the number of girls is less as compared to the number of boys. So these districts, 100 districts were identified and 5 crore money has been allotted specifically for these 100 districts. Then, Toilets is a basic issue. So, the schemes have been launched, efforts are being made, Swachhita Abhyan is there. So, construction of toilets specifically for girls in the same setup is being also done at a large scale level. Then the next intervention is or the next major scheme launched by the recent government is the Swachh Bharat Swachh Vidyale. 
again under this ambit a number of toilets are being made in the school which are contributing to the cleanliness of the school and which are contributing to the uh, betterment of the facilities in the school. The next major intervention is Padhe Bharat, Badhe Bharat. An amount of rupees 397 crores has been improved to enable the children to become independent readers and writers. Now what is happening with this scheme is this money is being provided so that there are number of books which are made available in the school and the children are able to go through these books. And if they go through these books, they read more books, they are going to be better readers, they are going to be better informed citizens and they are consecutively they are going to be better writers. Next major intervention is the admissions under section 12.1c of RTE Act. Now why this needs to be highlighted is among this uh, launch of SSA and amongst this interventions being made of the SSA, RTE Act was launched in the year or uh, was uh, implemented in the year 2010. So a lot of provisions were made under RTE also which were contributing to the education of the children. So a amalgamation of both or a cusp of both RTE Act and the SSA provisions was needed to be made so that we can further the education system. A total of 18.49 lakh children studying in private schools under this section during the year 2014-15. What, what this section 12.1c says is, let me explain you that 25% of the children in any kind of school or in any uh, private school are going to be from the weaker sections. And what the state offers to these school is, you include 25% children and we are going to fund you or we are going to pay you for the same. So, seven states have already started the reimbursement of the fees to the private schools. So, one can understand that there is so much going on. The government is making efforts at all levels. The central government is making efforts. All the states are making different kinds of efforts and we already have Kerala as a fully literate state. So, their literacy rate is an example that if we, the sincere efforts of the government are made at all levels, the things can be better. That was all about SSA. Thank you.